this video, I'm going to help you pick out what the best rock sliders are for your 4x4. I went with RSG's angled bulletproof sliders, but my needs may be different than your needs. So in this video, I'm going to help simplify a lot of things and help you figure out what the best ones are for your vehicle. If all you really need is a step, then I'd highly recommend checking out this video for more information on how to get better steps. Rock sliders are just for hardcore off-roading situations. They do work great as a step if you choose the right options, but they're very expensive and they're very heavy, so they're not necessary for everybody. One of the first questions to ask yourself is, do you need an angled slider or a flat slider? If you're just thinking about going off-roading, I'd highly recommend getting angled sliders as preferred to, to flat sliders. Flat sliders stick out more so they work better as a step and for door dig protection. However, they don't offer as much ground clearance with angled sliders offering usually around two inches more ground clearance on the sides. These RSG angled sliders are a perfect mix of both. They're only angled five degrees, which makes them better for off-roading as you have more ground clearance and also good as a step. They're not as good as angled sliders with the ground clearance and they're not as good as flat sliders for the step, but I think that they're a perfect combination of both. The second question to ask is what materials do you need? Do you need DOM steel or HREW steel? HREW steel is cheaper, but it's less protective for your vehicle. I personally run HREW steel and I've never had any problems on any hard trails. If you do end up going with the more expensive steel, you do have that peace of mind that you'll never get your vehicle hurt off road, but any steel is gonna be perfectly fine. Although it does come down to personal preference, there are a few options that I do think is a waste of money. Rock sliders are already expensive as is, and so I think that cutting out the powder coat option is a perfectly fine choice, especially if you're going to be going off-roading all the time. With or without a powder coat, you'll be scratching your paint off, and so you'll need to be able to spray paint scratches to fix them up anyway. Sometimes powder coating services cost as much as $200 just for the paint, while a rattle can of Rust-Oleum costs about $6 to $7. Touching up your paint isn't hard either. Over time, rock sliders do become scratched, no matter what. Bare metal is a great way to save like an extra $200. The top plate does cost a little extra money, and it does add a little bit more weight, but it's worth the sacrifice in my opinion, especially if you're going to be standing on them often. I'd recommend getting the grip top plate that RSG offers. Be careful when standing on these with bare feet or with something like sandals because you can get cut up pretty bad. If the brand that you chose doesn't have a grip top plate option and they only have a flat top plate, then you can always get some double-sided sticky tape and put sandpaper on the top. Although it does wear down over time, this will offer a lot better stability when standing on your rock sliders. Another benefit of getting a top plate is that it prevents mud or other debris from being kicked up from your front tires and hitting your paint. The purpose of a kickout is to push the back of your vehicle away from rocks when sliding on it to prevent rear quarter panel damage. Another benefit is that it acts as an excellent step at the back of your vehicle when trying to reach things like a rooftop tent or max tracks located on your roof. This is something I wouldn't go without no matter which option I choose. If your rock sliders don't offer a kickout, I would consider looking at some other ones. I personally think a kickout is a no-brainer, it works great as a step, it's great off-road, and it doesn't cost much more. The final main thing to consider is if you want weld-on or bolt-on sliders. Although rock sliders are extremely strong, they do act as an extension of your vehicle. The main issue with getting weld-on sliders is that they become permanent. If they become bent to the point of no return, you can't take them off. Being able to replace or take off my rock sliders to paint them when I need is something that I wouldn't go without. The sliders on this Land Cruiser are another high quality option. They're made by Slee Off-Road in Golden, Colorado, and they're a flat bolt-on slider with no kickout, which is a very different style than mine. I'd go with the no kickout choice if you don't see yourself being wedged on a rock and you like the low profile look. They can definitely be fantastic sliders off-road. They're extremely durable and will easily carry the weight of the vehicle. You can also use these to jack the vehicle up with something like a high lift jack. The top plate on these sliders is fantastic. It has a texturized coating on the top, which offers similar slip resistance to the RSG sliders. Although these don't suit my needs as well, this is a great option if you don't need the extra few inches of ground clearance. As with the RSG sliders, the Slee off-road sliders are also bolt-on. They bolt straight onto the frame using these four posts made out of steel, and they're very strong design. Oh. 
Another note is that DIY rock sliders could be a great way to get whatever you want out of a rock slider. You can customize the kick out, the top plate material, the paint, anything that you want. You must have experience or machinery to do this though, and you're trusting the weight of the vehicle on your handiwork, so just make sure that you do a good job. Also, when you're installing rock sliders, use a jack or two to put them on. They're a pain to do without one.